The, the day was Thursday, December 30th. It's a day and a date that uh, myself and my family will, will never forget. My, my husband, my kids, they were uh, at home watching Netflix because it was holiday time, full holiday mode. So then I called them that this thing is happening and it seems fire is pretty much close because we live in Louisville. I zigzagged my way through Louisville, ended up by the golf course on uh, Dillon Road. Um, and that's when I knew it was really bad because the fire had come all the way down to Dillon Road. And so along Coal Creek Trail and the golf course where they kind of come together, the flames were right there and the smoke was like blackout smoke. And that's the base of our neighborhood. So I was like, holy cow, this is really bad. It was like Hollywood movie. The entire road was sadly jammed. Car was not moving because everyone was on road that time. And fire was, it was so close to the road. So we all piled into my son's car, which was four adults, two big German shepherds, and we have our three cats plus his cat. And so, but we couldn't find one of the cats. We have one cat that's a master hider. And so that cat, we just, you know, it, it freaked out and, and went into hiding. So with the flames across the street, we had to leave it, which was um, just awful because the cat perished in the fire. The entire sky was full black, smoky, gray, orange. And my family was in the uh, other side, like they were there. And I was just crying that time moment, standing in that US 36 road. And I was crying that time. I was. I was not sure whether I'm going to meet them or not. And so we were pretty sure we can see the house on the news uh, burning, which was pretty awful. So we ended up turning the news off and I kind of knew the house was gone. My kids didn't want to hear that though. They, you know, they held out hope. We'd lost everything we had, everything plus a cat, and that didn't, that made it worse. So we were really like, okay, you know, like what, what do we do and stuff? And someone said, well, it's over at the Y in Lafayette, and you know where that is, and we can, you know, we can draw you a map or something. And I like, you know, I go, yeah, I think I can figure out how to get there, <laughs> right? So um, we got the kids situated. And then my wife and I came over to the Y, not knowing what to expect. We were broken, no food, no clothes. We all had a bad trauma uh, that moment. And when we reached YMCA, that gate, from there we had amazing experience, like the welcome. That first night, it was just everybody, all hands on deck to help support people. And you know, we had people coming in on stretchers, people with their cats and their dogs. We had people coming in that had COVID, that needed care. So we made a ward. Our gymnasium became kind of the central hub for the sleeping arrangements for people. We were out there just pulling people in, helping them, finding places for them to, to lay down, to catch a breath, to process what was going on and people were in shock. Our staff were ready to work. They were ready to spend the night here to be able to help people. Volunteers, our board members showed up. They came and they just started hauling water or, or gathering supplies. It was incredible. People just kept giving us stuff, like, here, take this, take this. And, um, and then I bumped into Chris and some of the other staff. And so again, as a white professional, who loves the why it was just made it was just like so heartfelt or heartwarming to see the staff here you know and this was the 31st i think if i recall so it was like new year's eve and to see what the why was doing was just it lifted my wife and my spirit where um it gave us like an ounce of hope it just was amazing to see the why do this i'm so proud of the why and what the why's done for done for people during their darkest hour. We started as cots in the gym and we continued that for 
believe it was 11 days, but then it turned into anything people needed. Uh, left wife, our trunk was full of stuff like water, heater, food, clothes, everything. Thanks is just a small word that can't uh, show our uh, uh, feeling for Y and Red Cross. People know to trust the Y, that the Y will always be that conduit for the community. We will help activate the right resources, we know who to call, and we'll get it done. You know, after 18 years with this organization, um, it never lets anybody down. Sorry. Um, it's through a pandemic, through natural disasters, through everything. The heart of this organization, the leadership, the community that supports it, it's, it gives me hope.